Well, holy smokes, guys, did you see the stock market today? Look at this, Dow Jones Industrial Average down about 650 points here today. Look at the S&P 500 down 1.86%, NASDAQ down 1.64%. I think at the lows today, the Dow was down close to 800 points. So just a massive day down here today for the US stock market. The DAX over in Europe, right, down 3.71% last night. Massive, massive move down for the DAX there. Look at crude oil futures contracts down over 3% here today. Big downward move for the crude futures as well, okay? We see this. This is a huge move down. This is the worst day for the stock market in over a month and a half, okay? Over a month and a half, this is the worst day here today. We have a lot of people saying there's going to be more drama in the stock market, a lot more turbulence over the coming weeks. Let's just put it that way. A lot of folks saying that. So in this video, I want to answer a couple questions. Why did this happen here today? Okay, why did the market move down 650 points just out of nowhere? Will this continue? That's what we're mostly going to talk about in this video. Like what should we expect from this stock market? Those are two things we're going to get into in this video here today. Some folks are scared of a stock crash of any kind. They do not want the stock market to go down. Some folks would gladly welcome a stock market crash. It really depends on kind of a couple things. Okay, one is do you have some cash around, right? If you have some cash around, you usually want assets for lower because you can buy them for cheaper, right? And also your age, right? If you're retired, you probably don't want a stock market crash. However, if you are younger, you would love the market to go down 10, 20, 30, heck, 50%, you know, if you're younger because you can buy in for cheaper and cheaper stocks, okay? So it's kind of two ways of looking at it there. If you don't mind, go ahead and smash a thumbs up. I appreciate each and every one of you that are part of the thumbs up squad. Also, if you want to apply to try to get in my private stock group, you can do there down in the description area is the first link down there, all right? All right, guys, let's start getting this. So first, I wanna get into the main reason why the market was down huge today, okay? Rony Rona is going beast mode. Let's just put it that way. U.S. sets Rony Rona case record amid new surge. More than 85,000 new cases of the V were reported across the country on Friday, shattering an earlier single day record and stirring new fears about the months ahead when it comes to the Rony Rona. I mean, it's just going beast mode. There's no other way of putting it, okay? Average daily new Rony Rona cases in US hit all time high. Gottlieb warns of exponential spread now at this point in time. This chart here shows you the Rony Rona cases over time. And just look at that. I mean, we're the, we're the highest we've ever been. Let's just put it that way. So so, I mean, I remember when, you know, they thought it was really bad in the springtime, right? And we're just like, we're, cr we're crushing those numbers. And I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I don't think it's a good thing. Okay. White House Chief Meadows says, we're not going to control the pandy after Rony Rona cases hit record high. You know, I saw that and I just, you know, I don't know what to say about that. And, and I mean, it just kind of sounds like it's just, it's just going to happen. It's going to happen and it's going to get worse. And we're probably going to go to, you know, uh, six days digits in terms of new cases per day at some point in time over the next month or so. It just sounds like we're kind of just, you know, at that place now. That's just the way it looks, okay? He says, we're not going to control the pandy, Meadows told CNN. We are going to control the fact that we get vaccines, therapeutics, and other mitigations is what they're saying there. So, you know, Man, I don't know what to say other than, you know, it just kind of seems like the government's like, you know, whatever's going to happen here is whatever's going to happen. So it is what it is, at least as far as the spreading of the Rony Rona. European nations are returning to restrictions as the V surges over in Europe it is going crazy over there as well. New regulations and social distancing rules are being introduced across multiple European countries in an attempt to stop the spread of the Rony Rona as a second wave of the pandy accelerates across the continent. Europe reported more than 1.3 million new cases this past week. 1.3 million new cases past week. That's a huge number, okay? It's highest single week count yet, according to the World Health Organization. Massive, okay? There are now five Mike Pence aides that have tested positive for Rony Rona at this point in time. So obviously we know, you know, a few weeks ago, Trump had the Rona, right? Now there's a lot of people around the VP that have the Rona. So, you know, 
I don't know what's going to happen there, but there's just a lot of people in general. You're hearing about more and more big people too that are getting Roni Rona. Like I follow sports and I've seen a lot of people over the past month or so that are actually big names in, in sports um, actually come down with, with the Rona, whether it's actual like sports players or like, you know, coaches and things like that. Okay. And I'll say if it gets bad enough, I even might have to make some changes in my own life because I haven't really like, like, like as this whole thing's gone on, my life has been pretty normal. Like I, I wake up around the same time. I kind of do the same activities. I haven't treated things that much different other than obviously I'll like social distance if I go somewhere or, and I wear a mask and things like that. But as far as like going out to eat, going to stores and things like that, like I do just as much as I've ever done. Like we go out to eat like at least once a week, every single week, uh, going to stores. It's, it, I don't really like feel concerned. I've always been a germ freak. So I always take some sanitizer with me and I wear my mask and things like that. But it, it hasn't really concerned me because at the end of the day, I'm a numbers guy and I look at the numbers and I'm like, there's this extremely low probability I would get the Ronin because it's just not enough, like as, as a percent of the population, it's just not enough out there to, you know, really, really like scare me in any major way. But I will say if we started going to like, you know, here in Nevada, we started going to some of these other numbers that some of these other states are on, you know, I mean, that would maybe change my perspective a little bit. And I might say, you know what, maybe we won't go out tonight. Let's just go ahead and, and eat in tonight, something like that. And the fact is, there's a lot of people out there that if the numbers get higher and higher and higher, people are going to say, man, my probably probability is if I go out, if I go somewhere, I'm going to have a pretty decent probability of getting this thing. And I don't really want to get this thing, not just because people don't want to get it for themselves, but sometimes people don't want to spread it to elderly family members or friends or things like that. So that's something very, very important to keep in mind there. So there's definitely a lot of folks that could be thinking like that. And at the end of the day, Rona going crazy equals a slowed down economic recovery. We know we already hit the bottom, right? When everything closed down. And so we're trying to recover now. Now, but if Rona is going crazy, it's gonna slow things down. It just will. It will change mentalities even more. People will get more scared if they see these numbers continue to go higher and higher. They'll pull back on spending, going out, things like that, and it will slow down the economic recovery. There was a lot of hope that you know we could get into a stronger spring and summer that could be pushed back more essentially if we have a really weak winter time. Okay, so this is something very important. The Rona also going crazy can equal a lot of city and state restrictions. More restrictions you know i mean think about it this way right europe is is having a bunch more restrictions put on now right after they loosen up things and i think there's a lot of cities and states that if the numbers go high enough and get bad enough they'll start putting on restrictions once again okay and so that's obviously if you're thinking about economic growth and company numbers and things like that. It's all stuff that's just bad and it's bad for the stock market, it's bad for the economy, right? And if you look at the worst stocks in the Dow 30 here today, it's telling you that exact same story. Look at the worst stocks in the Dow 30. The worst stock here today was American Express. Why? Because American Express is all about people spending money. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> it's about as good of a, a look for the economy as possible if in terms of like, how, what is American Express doing for numbers? What is Visa doing for numbers? Super, super important because if people are doing a ton of transactions, spending a ton of money, it's obviously a very good thing for American Express and Visa, right? But obviously, if there's a if there's a pullback in spending in a major way, it hurts companies like an American Express in a major, major way. And that was the worst stock today in the Dow 30. Look at the second worst stock in the Dow 30 here today, Boeing. What does Boeing do? Okay, well they do. They have many different business lines, but the main one is they sell new airplanes, okay, aircrafts, commercial aircrafts. And obviously, you know, if we're talking about Rona going crazy over the next coming months, it's just going to hurt the airlines even more. The, the more and more the airlines are hurt, the more and more they have to push back any new orders from Boeing over time. It's travel, right? Salesforce was the fourth worst stock in the Dow here today. That's a high growth company that obviously a lot of folks maybe have some fears around how much are they really going to be able to grow if we have a slowed down economic environment. Look at Disney. Disney's huge into what? Sports, theme parks. Disney has many businesses, but sports, themes, parks. Also, their movies end up where? Mostly movie theaters and all of that. It's more questions than ever. And look at Disney. It was a fifth war stock in the Dow 30 here today. And you're getting the complete opposite when you look at basically the best stocks here today in the Dow 30. Look at this, okay? The, the only stock that technically finished green here today on this day when the Dow was down 650 points was Apple. 
look at Apple because Apple at the end of the day, it's, it's just super solid and it's Apple and they're gonna probably have a, a very successful iPhone launch regardless of whatever happens out there. They're just a, a free company. Some, some, some companies are just special like that and Apple's one of those special companies. Also, more folks working from home, guess what? That means more, even more orders for Macs, iPads, things like that. So the company actually finished up today. That's amazing, right? And then you look after Apple, and it's all safety plays, right? Verizon Communications, safety play. Procter & Gamble, safety play. Johnson & Johnson, safety play. Amgen, safety play. Walmart, safety play. Merck, safety play. Every single stock that was better than what the market was today, all straight safety plays. Because essentially, when you have this type of big volatility come in and a big move down the stock market, what do people wanna do? And when I say people, I mean investors and funds. They run to safety. They say, where's the safe place? The safe place is Verizon stock. The safe place is Johnson & Johnson stock. The safe place is Walmart stock. That is the way they look at it in the end. So you're clearly seeing a massive difference between the places you gotta go to and experience and be around people and things like that versus the safe safety plays like, you know, they sell toilet paper and tissues and, and like Tylenol, stuff like that, right? I mean, it's just a massive, massive difference between the, the, the stocks that did well today versus the stocks that did awful, okay? I had a couple stocks that actually finished green today. I was fortunate. Stitch Fix being one of them, but Stitch Fix, what are they? Why is that stock up here today? Well, it's an online shopping company, right? And so if you think about the mall environment and, and you know, let's imagine Roni Roni gets much worse, might definitely be some fears about people going out, okay? And, and so maybe not as many people go out there and buy clothing and things like that from actual physical retailers. Somebody like a Stitch Fix can benefit massively because they ship the packages to your house, okay? And Switch, a data center company, I think that's another move to a lot of people just looking at where, where's a safe place to put my money? Oh, data center, Switch. Oh, they're, they're massive in the data center business. Hmm, okay, Switch seems like a good stock to be in, okay? That's exactly how people are looking at it. I had a few other stocks that were hardly down today compared to how the market was down, right? The market was down 650 points. And look at Tesla Maesla. It was barely down. It almost finished green here today. Why? Well, Tesla at the end of the day, they're, you know, they're a special company. They're like an Apple, right? They're, they're a free company. They're going to do good regardless, okay? And also, how many more, how many people want to go to like car dealerships and, and try out the cars? You know, Tesla, you can just order it on, on your smartphone in five minutes and a Model 3 will be delivered to your house, right? Cruisy doozy. They make chips, audio components that go in. Guess what? Apple devices mostly, including probably the new iPhones, right? We'll see the teardowns of that. Elf Beauty as a cosmetics company that sells very affordable cosmetics, right? And so that's a perfect play if there's any more economic danger out there and people still wanna buy makeup, guess where they go? Somewhere like an Elf that has high quality products for very affordable pricing, okay? And so look at that. There's just a clear difference in divergence. Look at this here, okay? This shows you the last 10 trading days. And what we're gonna see is things are progressively getting worse recently, okay? In the last 10 trading days, we have had seven down days and only three up days. So 70% of the days recently have been down days. And look at the, the downward moves are usually much more violent than the actual upward moves. So we're starting to get some real weakness in the market recently. And keep in mind, election day, here we are, we're a week away from election day, okay? Which means there's gonna be a lot of drama over the next two weeks. That's all I can say about that. A lot of drama over the next two weeks. Remember, we don't even know, on election night, usually you get basically the results and you know who's gonna win or not. We don't even know if we're gonna know after the first day who's gonna win this election. We might not even know after the first week who's gonna win the election because there's gonna be so many mail-in ballots and ballots in general to start going through and you can't start going through most of that. Well, it depends on the state, but you can't go start going through most of that until actually the elections happen, okay? Or like November 3rd, okay? And so, you know, that's gonna be a big drama show. Let's just put it that way. That is gonna be absolutely a big drama show. Then you're seeing this, okay? Stimulus deal before election looks less likely as Pelosi pushes Mnuchin over testing. And so, I mean, guys, it doesn't look, unless there's a miracle, it doesn't look like we're getting stimulus anytime soon, okay? And I mean, that was a lot of stimulus money. I mean, we're talking about a couple trillion dollars worth of stimulus, not like it's a small amount of money, and it just doesn't look like it's gonna happen. And so if there's no stimulus happening, when are we gonna get it? Do we have to wait for like January, February, March? 
the market was kind of secretly planning on stimulus being announced somewhat soon. And we've been hearing this for months and it just hasn't happened. So now we might be waiting until all the way until 2021 likely for any type of stimulus deal to get reached in this whole situation outside of a miracle. Democrats in the White House have recently proposed $2.2 trillion and $1.9 trillion relief packages. So it seems like there's like a discrepancy of around $300 billion roughly and, and some other you know minor details. But at the end of the day, the numbers are really, really large regardless, okay? And, and there's a difference of about $300 billion there and I mean, Jay Powell's over there. He's like, bro, I could, I could do 300 billion in three seconds. Like, you guys need the money? Like, I got it. I got it right here, man. I, I just print it real quick, okay? And so, it, you know, it's it's crazy. There's just this disagreement over, you know, what is a, a potential huge package over, you know, a smaller amount of money of the package. Let's just put it that way, a much smaller amount. This might be my favorite Wall Street bets meme I ever saw right here, right? The Jay Powell money printer. Oh gosh, it's still, I still love that meme. That's an old beam back from like March, but my goodness, that's still one of my favorites. So look at this one here. This is this basically, this meme is basically exactly how it's been the last several months in regards to stock market and this whole stimulus deal. It's like Pelosi, Trump, Mnuchin, they're like battling it out, right? Then the market sells off on stimulus failures that they're going to be no stimulus, right? Then the administration hints at a resolution. Then the market rallies on temporary news and then really no progress is made. And I feel like we've been in this for literally like four or five months now. This is the exact situation we've been in the stock market for at least like the last four months where it's just like this cycle going around where it's like you know there's some hope and then there's no hope and then there's some hope and then there's some no hope and really no progress seems to be made and so will this continue okay will this whole situation continue well Forbes did a really good piece a couple months ago a really good piece in my opinion done by Forbes and it basically goes into how the stock market has performed before during and after presidential elections and I showed a little bit of this in a video I did about two weeks ago or so okay and this this is really important so you can get some context on likely where we're going to go in the stock market. Nothing's ever for sure, but we can get some context on where we're probably going to go, okay? And what you're going to notice is generally speaking, going into the election, the market's pretty decent, okay, for the for the, the, the past months going into election. But what we're going to notice is pretty much regardless of whoever wins the election, usually for a month to three months after the election, usually the market's going down, okay? So, I mean, when you're looking at this, whether Trump wins or Biden wins, and people have different opinions. I've seen a lot of people that are super confident Trump's going to win. I've seen, obviously, myself, who I think I think Biden's going to win easily. You know, everybody's got their own opinion out there, and that's fine. Whoever wins, regardless, the market's probably going down over the short term, whether it's Trump or Biden in this whole situation, okay? That's just something to keep in mind. It's nothing for sure, but if you're looking at the odds and the probability, the probability is we will be going down for the next several weeks, if not the next couple months. Okay, and so you got to think about it. Like, what do you have to look forward to in the stock market for the next, let's say, two to three months? Okay, is there anything that exciting going on for the stock market over the next two to three months? Okay, this is what you're really looking at. Rona's going to be going crazy. Okay, that's just like facts. Okay, I mean, there's no other way about it. There's no stimulus as of right now, and there likely won't be stimulus until potentially uh, maybe 2021, right? There might potentially be no stimulus until 2021. And then number three, you got election drama. You got election drama. And remember, a lot of people after the election like to look at worst case scenario in, the, in these whole situations. So if, if Trump's elected for another four years, you know, Democrats are gonna be saying, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. This is gonna be so bad. And there's gonna be a lot of fears around that, right? If Biden gets elected, there's gonna be so much talk about, oh, corporate taxes are gonna go up. That's gonna hurt the stock market and taxes on rich people are going to go up. That's going to hurt the stock market. You're going to have a lot of people looking at things as glass half empty, like they usually do after the election. Okay. Cause you know, basically half the country is going to be disappointed one way or another. Right. And so there's going to be so much election drama. And like I said, we don't even know if we're going to, we don't know when we're going to get the answer to who actually wins this election. It is probably not going to be on election night. We might have to wait days, weeks, or I, I hope not a month, but it, potentially days or weeks after to really get an idea of who actually won the election, okay? And that's what we have to look forward to in the next two to three months. That's not too dang exciting, let's put it that way, okay? And so am I selling? Am I gonna sell my stocks and say, you know what, uh, since the market's probably gonna go down over the next month or two, no one knows for sure, but it's probably gonna go down for the next month or two, am I gonna sell? Heck no, 
Absolutely not, okay? And here's why. The selling and buying back game is too dang hard. It just is ridiculous, okay? You can you think you can time things out and you could think you can look at charts and like, oh, well, um, the, the, the stock market usually goes down. Oh my gosh, we have Rona going bad and there's no stimulus and there's like, there's a lot of bad stuff to look at right now, right? But it's just too hard to play that trying to time it out game and get in and out of the stocks and oh, I'm gonna sell out of my portfolio. I'm gonna buy back in my portfolio. I mean, we saw in March of 2020, what did we see? Mass selling in the market, right? Dow goes 23,000. 21,000, 19,000. At its lows, it was in the 18,000 range. People were selling out of their accounts in mass, figuring, hey, I can sell out and, and you know the market's probably gonna go even lower. And when the market goes even lower, I'll be able to go ahead and buy back in. And we saw people you know, consistently selling and selling and selling. And how'd that work out? Most people didn't, you know, were never able to get back in because there was a lot of talk about the Dow was gonna go to 15,000, 12,000, 10,000 and it never happened. I think the bottom was somewhere around, I wanna say 18.3 or so, and that was it, okay? And so a lot of people ended up selling out and they were not able to get back in. It's just so hard to time it. And in April, so April we started having a comeback in the stock market, right? And we had this like initial comeback and the Dow went back over 20,000, and a lot of people looked at that and they said, okay, we, we had a bit of a bounce back here, but we're gonna go right back down. We're probably gonna go way lower than we were in March, okay? And you had a lot of people looking at that and saying, I'm gonna sell and I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy back in after it goes down a bunch again, okay? And the problem with that is the stock market didn't go down again. It just kept going up despite all the bad news we had coming over the coming months. I mean, we had a lot of bad news. It was bad news on bad news on bad news. And a lot of that had already been priced in. All of that had already been priced in, to be quite frank, okay? That's how you got the market to go from 29,000 Dow to 18,000. It was a fastest drop of 35% in the stock market history, okay? History. It was absolutely insane, okay? So this whole timing thing it is tough, okay? But I will say, I will be ready to buy in heavier and heavier in this drama. I absolutely have money ready to rock and roll if we get a bunch more drama and the market goes lower and lower over the coming days, weeks, or the coming months for the rest of this year, I am 100% ready to buy a bunch of stocks, okay? If people wanna sell off Tesla stock and have it go to 220, I'll be there to buy it. If Dropbox, people wanna sell that stock and it goes to 17, I'll be there to buy it. Heck, I'll be there to buy it at 19 as well, okay? If the FB, people wanna sell a bunch of shares and it goes to 200, under 200, man, I will gladly be picking up some FB, okay? If Skyworks, people wanna sell off Skyworks, works one of the top players in 5g over the next five ten years in my opinion and then that stock goes under 100 i'll be there to buy it if winnie resorts i'm i'm here to buy it right now but especially if it goes under 70 it goes in the 60s and 50s i will happily buy some winnie okay the planet which we all know sells jack jackson right if that goes to the twos you better believe I'll be buying some more of the planet, okay? Absolutely. And so the main question is, are you ready? Are you ready? You got some money around in case we get some, some weakness in the market and we follow suit with what happens in most election time periods where the market dips and sometimes dips quite heavily right after the election. Are you ready? Do you got some money ready to rock and roll? I hope you do. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you don't mind, smash a thumbs up. I appreciate each and every one of you that helps out the YouTube channel massively in the algorithm. Rhythm. Also, if you want to apply for my private stock group and start taking stock market investing super serious, you can do that. It's going to be the first link in the description down there to fill out an application. And if you're somebody that maybe you don't have much money around, you're not ready to take advantage of any deals in the market or things like that because you might just not have any money around, check out a video I posted last night on financial education three top five side hustle ideas for 2021. Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, it's one of those things. If you got no money around, man, you got to make some money and uh, so some side hustle ideas for you out there. Thank you for watching and have a great day.